I turn my thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth, there is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be, I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell, in my heart of hearts, where all is well. The peace and joy that his spirit expressed I find is me, dear God, and make manifest I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell In my heart of hearts, where all is well peace and joy that his spirit expressed I find his me dear God and make manifest I turn within dear Lord for there you dwell in my heart of hearts where all is well the love the peace and joy that his spirit expressed I find his me, dear God And make manifest I turn within, dear Lord For there you dwell In my heart of hearts Where all is well The love, the peace and joy That his spirit expressed everyone good evening and welcome welcome to the temple of light center for spiritual living to our lifeline episode this evening we are so so excited and happy to have you here and we welcome each and every one of you to our hearts we have a very special guest with us and i will introduce her in a little while or ask reverend john to introduce her or she'll get introduced <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I just would like you to know that this is an hour of, of laughter and liberty and fun and, and just sharing um, from the heart, sharing what spirit provokes you to share, to, to ask questions, to, to share what's on your mind with regards to the topic, and we'll tell you about that in a little while. Uh, so let me just invite Reverend John to do the opening affirmative prayer. We start everything in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. It's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to our worldwide spiritual family. Please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. As we know together that there is only one mind, one infinite intelligence, one presence, one power, one heart, one love, called by many names, worshipped in many different forms, but ever one, one God omnipresent, omniscient, omniactive. It is, it is all there is. And it is right in the midst of us this evening in this which we call a lifeline series. I know the infinite mind of God fills our consciousness with every idea we need to just take another step on the upward spiraling path of light and life and truth the greater than we have ever experienced before. I know for our guest that her tongue is tipped with celestial fire. She's just open and she draws us up with her to the highest octave of love and blessing and understanding of the truths of life which set us free. And so we give thanks for this moment, for this hour of love, laughter and liberty and learning. We give thanks for life, for God and for all that is. This world is released to law in thanksgiving for its perfect fulfillment. We give thanks that this is truly so. And together we say, and so, so it, it is. is. Thank you so much, beloved. Wow, you know, 
this lifeline um, series started just after the pandemic last year. We just wanted to create an opportunity to, you know, just to share with others how we could thrive, how we could remain spiritually centered during the challenges of um, when we, when, you know, during the onset of COVID. And so, you know, the, the whole experience has been an opportunity where we provide spiritual tools and strategies to enable anyone um, in the sound of our voice, anyone tuning into this experience to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges. And we just wanted to, to support others to, to move from a, 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 um, a fear-based thinking to a faith-based thinking and thus lifeline. And so let me very, very quickly tell you a little bit about our guest this evening. She has been walking a spiritual path for over 40 years. A dynamic and inspiring speaker and teacher, she has shared her wisdom in spiritual and leadership settings nationally and internationally, bringing countless students into richer spiritually grounded living. She has published numerous articles as well as co-authored the hmm, joyous freedom, joyous living, and joyous abundance series with Reverend Dr. Christian Sorensen. She has led numerous retreats on spiritual living, community development, and leadership training. Her passions include youth, service, inclusion, peace, environment, conscious leadership, global transformation, and expanding consciousness. She is currently serving as co-spiritual director at Center for Spiritual Living in Dallas, Texas. I had the awesome pleasure of visiting at CSL Dallas in 2019. Consciousness. And had the pleasure. She is currently serving as co-spiritual director oh, at Center for Spiritual Living in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Okay. I had the awesome. Okay. I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Petro when I visited in 2019, and it was amazing. I mean, I loved your center, and I love you. So. It it's a pleasure to have you and to welcome you to our hearts and our store. I mean, not physically, but here at the Temple of Life. And so our, our topic this evening, every end, a beginning. It's the end of 2021, and we're about to start 2022. So I'd just like to turn it over to you and whatever your heart tells you to share with us. It's all yours. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you, Reverend John. I'm so delighted to be here with you and Vance and Steve who are supporting us. And it's great to be with you. And I, I wish I was actually really there. <laughs> yes, you have to make that an intention. I will. So when I was 16 years old, I was in Jamaica for three weeks over Christmas and New Year's. And it was fabulous. I loved it. And um, yeah, it's really, I would love to be back. Um, so, um, yeah, celebration and release, right? The end of the year, celebration and release. Actually, one wonders whether it's release and celebration. How do we think about those and in what <laughs> order? Um, and I think it has a lot to do with how we hold this last year. I always love this part of the year when you come to the end of the year and you think about, well, where have I been? What's been going on? And where am I going? goes without saying right the year's been different than we all expected mm -hmm. and um we thought that it would be over over right well i actually remember last year thinking somebody said oh three months we'll be back no big deal well and then that you know we've all had the experience it extended and extended and then last this year the same mm -hmm. and we had a big huge um uh what should we call it we call it winter geddon here in dallas where we had uh, hundreds of thousands of people um, without power and, and the water Ooh. bursts because we had this massive storm. The, our center, we had a water burst, 15,000 square feet under six inches of water, uh, just when we thought we were going to reopen. And that took five, six months to repair. We were closed the entire time again. And then we thought we were going to reopen in June. No, COVID was too much. July, yeah. Oh, I think we opened for two weeks. 
we closed back down again. We opened again in October. We, oh, we were going to open in September. No, we're, we finally opened in October. And today we closed again. So we've... Um, today? Today we closed again. Oh we goodness. canceled our burning bowl ceremony on the 1st of January. We canceled oh, live streaming only on Sunday. We have so many people. We're in a big, we're right in the middle of another spike. Mm. And right. And so, you know, so if that's what we look at, man, there's a lot to release, isn't it? I felt a lot of grief. I felt a lot of grief, especially about the, the um, potential um, loss of the fabric of our community. I felt people that we were having trouble connecting with or staying connected to and yet other people we stayed very connected to or other people who said even though we didn't know it that our philosophy was their lifeline speaking of lifeline right? yes indeed indeed aptly and named yes right i love that i love that and it certainly was true for me and so so i noticed that like all of us grief frustration anger Technology. Oh, can we say technology? <laughs> and can we say technology again? Right? And all of that. So what I also noticed is that I have many things to celebrate. And if I am fixated on all of these things that I have not yet released, or that I am resistant to, or that I'm frustrated about, that it's really hard to celebrate. It's really hard to find those things to celebrate. But I would suggest that each and every one of us actually has celebration available to us, even in the midst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So for us, some of that celebration has come in the form of our granddaughter. Our, my son and his wife needed a much, much, much more help than we had anticipated. Um, we've done an enormous amount of child care very unexpectedly for months and months and months we've done an enormous amount of child care we didn't just get to be grandparents um we just she just finally got her eye surgery this week we had her in quarantine so we had no christmas we had nobody we weren't with anybody because she had to be in quarantine um and yet her eye surgery went perfectly of course as we all know two days ago um yesterday actually yesterday and and one of the things that i know is that had we not been in the pandemic, we could not have done the amount of childcare that we did. Mm -hmm. We could not have seen her take her first steps, watched her um, eat with a fork for the first time, watched <laughs> her, you know, rub her face with spaghetti and and all of the all of the joy, right? We couldn't have we and we would not have had any of that because we would have been working and we would have been had to say like all the other grandparents. I'm sorry, I have to go to work. But because we were home, we were able to do a lot of back and forth and sharing of the childcare. Oh, I've got to be in a meeting. Okay, I'll take her, right? It was, and so the, the blessing of that was so astonishing. Oh, wonderful. Despite the fact that it was challenging. Okay, I had my child when I was in my 30s. <laughs> so raising a granddaughter is, I'm not in my 30s anymore. Right. So, so it was challenging and the late nights and the sleep deprivation, all of that stuff. All of that took second place to the joy. To the joy. Yes. Right. You know, um, if I may, Reverend, yes. I'm hearing so much in what you're saying. You know, when I, when I started in truth uh, almost 40 years ago, um, we, we, we banded around with the phrase truth student syndrome. All is well. Uh. You know, everything is in divine order. Perfect right action. And of course, when life is happening and it's turbulent and marriages are breaking up and there's no money and so on. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm mm. fine. You know, everything right. is good. And, and so there's that, that, you know, how could I let them know that I'm feeling this, going through this, when I'm supposed to be a truth student. Yes. So we say nothing. And what I'm hearing is you describing a very real life. You know, stuff is happening at the, the temple. At, yes. Sorry, at your center. The center. Yeah. Um, you're getting flooded. You're getting shut down. People are, are making their transition. You're home. They open again. You close again. You know, it's just been a roller coaster. 
And in the mm -hmm. meantime, you can find the, the yes. joy. You can right. find the moments to celebrate. And so it's okay to have what happens happen and continue to move with embracing the good. Yeah, Sandy, I think you say something so incredibly important. I think, you know, we use the, we use the phrase, oh, it's all easy and grace or it's all good. And, and so much, I think so often what we are doing is flatlining our lives. We're just, we just want it to be, you know, fine all the time. <laughs> yes. And, you know, fine all the time in my experience is like, oh, oh. Where's the passion? Where's Boring. the joy? Where's the effort? Where's the let's go make it happen? Where's the I got it. I mean, I can't tell you in the last two years and this year, I have dug into my spirituality and into my truth and into my conviction more than I probably ever had to keep right, to keep go to keep that sense of we can do this. We'll make it through. We will. And it's not just that it's oh, it's all fine. It no. It's going to be fine because I know where I stand. And I think that, you know, it, Ernest Holmes said a number of things. He, he, the, he, said, he said, we are suffer from too much theory and not enough practice yeah. as metaphysicians, <laughs> right? And of course, his famous sermon on the uh, sermon on, I was going to say sermon on the Mount, <laughs> sermon by the sea that he gave at a Silomar, you know, just find me one person, find me one person who's living this, who's actually living this. And that's, and that to me, Sandy is a real life. We're not, we're not, I think the thing, one of the things that I love so much about the teachings is that we're not trying to transcend life. We're not trying to get away from it. We're not trying to, to levitate out of it. We're not looking for, you know, heaven afterwards. We're not trying to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to rise above everything right? It is in the being in the world and knowing who we are in the world that we can be in it so much more fully and richly. And so mm. I've shed some tears. I've had deep grief. I've had some pretty traumatic op, op, uh, experiences over this past year. Um, and, and, and just as much joy and, oh, and learning and growing and by god i'm gonna learn how to do this what we're doing right here have this on zoom right didn't we all have to learn how to do this and we can we can fold or we can resist or we can say oh gosh i wish it could just all be wonderful and peaceful but we make it wonderful and peaceful yeah there's yeah. something that i find very sustaining and it, we just finished doing a, a, a class a, a ignite your life with bible wisdom and we finished it you know early early december uh -huh. And the whole thing of, and it came to pass. Yes. You know, and I, I find that extremely strengthening yeah. because not just the, the rough times and the flooding of the center and the, the threat of a hurricane in Jamaica, that yes. comes to pass, but also even the good things yes. come to pass. And if you can let them go, then more good can come. Yes. Uh, yes. So that you are expecting this, this fluidity, this flow, Right. You know, that, you know, did you remember that song we used to sing when we were children, row, row, row your boat yes. down the stream, <laughs> you know, instead of trying to paddle the raft upstream, you know, uh -huh. we can just go with the flow down the stream. and use prayer as our, our, our oars to keep us off the rocks. Yes. And they, and they, and, and right. They, and the you know, Reverend John, you forgot the other part of that statement. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. Yes. Yeah, it didn't come to stay. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and it's so important. It's so important, right? How, how do you center Dr. Petra? How do, how do you get back when you've had a sleepless night with the granddaughter and you have a talk to give tomorrow and um, whatever, 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 life? How do you center? Well, I know that there is power for good in the universe greater than I am, and it's right where I yep. am. And it's using you. <laughs> and it's using me. And I, you it's, know, and I and trust it, it. Implic implicitly. Sometimes yeah. I'm using it to make sure she had her surgery, to make sure to create something new at the center to handle the fact that we're not together. Sometimes I'm using it. And sometimes it's using me. I'm tired. Yeah. She's been up all night. And I do actually have to give a talk in the morning. I've had some time to prepare, but maybe not as nearly as much as I'd like. 
and I get up there on the platform and I open my mouth and I trust that spirit will speak. And yep. so, right. Yep. I mean, so, so the techniques of centering, I think we all have many of them for me. I've done so much meditation that it's the centering breath. I just need a breath or two. If I can yep, just have too. that breath or two. Right. But, but what am I centering to? It's not just centering. What am I centering to? I'm centering into recognizing that everything that I need is already right here. It's Absolutely. right here. And if I can get out of the way, right? And that for me is the release. The release is not necessarily releasing the awful things that happened. I mean, that was also life. And partly I want to be proud of the fact of the way I handled it. I want to I want to acknowledge how other people handled it. I don't want to forget the things, the obstacles that I've overcome, right? I think, I think that's, what, that's not the point, is, is, to, is to pretend that those things didn't happen. And so what I'm centering myself into is that truth that allowed me to move through and to learn and to grow and to be stretched mm -hmm. and to become more. I feel actually, this, this may sound really strange, but I feel more grounded and more centered now than I did before the pandemic started. Mm. Why? Because I, I have 100%. been, right? Don't you think so, Agree, John? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And, I, and, and for me, it's because I've been forced to practice. Yep. Oh. Do you think, yep. is that this, would you say that's the same that, for that, you? That, absolutely. That makes absolutely. absolute sense. Uh, you because know, you see, um, when um, in my own experience, um, March, I, I'm a facilitator, I do leadership development and so on, you know, you, that, that, that stuff. That's and good stuff. I, I go out in, in, to do retreats and team building sessions and I'm in organization or we're at a, a, you know, some other venue. And then all, I mean, when I had my work lined up for two, three months and then everything shut down. This is my bread and butter. This is how I earn a living. Right. And I really had to, to move into a space of, of knowing, listen, it's not the job, it's God, my source. And, and the last 20 months have been the best I've ever had. It's just wow. been an amazing demonstration of what happens when we dig our heels in, yes. when we live from commitment, when you say it's going to be fine yes. because I know where I stand. Yes. You know, you know, Steve, uh, uh, who did our opening theme song, has a lovely... Um, song rooted in spirit mm -hmm. you know when you are when your roots go deep into that knowing that dr petra spoke about um mm -hmm. and so it's not just centering but centering into mm -hmm. that principle upon upon in which you're rooted yeah wow mm -hmm. yeah and i love that i love that rooted and i think of that as great i think often about the I, I need a place to stand and until yep. i can find that place to stand i feel a little wiggly and I feel a little panicked or I feel a little uncertain or I'm like, yeah. ah, right. And so I keep, I'm practicing and I'm practicing and I'm, and I'm looking for, okay, what's the spiritual truth or the principle or the thing that I know, or that sense of connection. And, and, and I just keep, I just keep at it and at it and at it. And there is that moment where I go, oh, oh, here, here is where I stand. And it, and it is that belief that all will be well, or I'm utterly supported, or the universe has my back, or, yes. <clears throat> yep. right, we're all, whatever, whatever it is, and it's not just a platitude, it's not, it's not a, it's, it's not a platitude, I, stay, I say, at the beginning of that process, right, it's the place, it becomes my come from place at the end of that process, when mm. all of a sudden, Right. I think of it as my stake in the ground. I, I have a place to stand. And now as things are shifting around me or things are going on around me, I keep coming back to that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And, and, um, 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 Ernest Holmes says this other really, really fabulous thing, which I just, I have quoted so many times in the last two years and it's, and, and it is, um, to desert the truth in our hour of need, shows that we have never understood the truth in the first place absolutely absolutely because it doesn't right because it doesn't mean that we've done anything wrong or that there's an right there's a hurricane i i don't think y'all created the hurricane i don't think you attracted it to yourself right hurricanes are natural phenomenons the question is what are we going to do pandemics are also you know phenomenons what are we going to do how are we going to meet it how are we going to be with it 
Um, and that's exactly the time that we can't desert the truth. And, yeah. and we have to, you know, and so when we dig, so, so that the, again, this is, this is that release piece. I think people release the wrong thing. Uh, they re- good. Right. They don't, you think so? They say, well, whatever spirit wants. Well, you know, I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. No, no, no. I loved what you said, Sandy, you dig your heels in but you release the way it's going to come about. You release yep. the process. Yep. Uh, you know, you stake your claim, you stand on that ground, but now you can be fluid. You can be, because it's not fright. It's not, it's not as frightening to be fluid because you actually have a place where you're standing. And I think yep. we let go of all the completely the wrong thing. So it's- I'm glad the, you said that because in our New Year's spiritual goal setting workshop, uh, next Monday evening. That's one of the things because it's a, it's our version of the burning bowl, you know. Uh, and uh, I want to talk about that. What are you releasing? Because it, even the things that didn't appear to be wonderful in in twenty twenty one were learning experiences. And so we're going to explore what have we learned. And when yes. you can extrapolate what the learning from it, then you can you can let go and let God. That's what the release really is. Yes. Um, you know, rather than telling God how you think it should be done, you know. Right. Um, well, whatever and, God's will is, but here's how I want you to do it, Lord. You know? Yes. And, but I don't want to tell you where I want to end up. You should yeah, decide exactly. where I want to end up, but then I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's like, wait, wait, exactly. wait. It's completely backwards. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I, love, I love Holmes also talks about Paul's statement in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 um, that we are changed from glory to glory. And yeah. Holmes says that that means that, that the whole of, of life is on that divine ascending scale. You know, yes. it's getting, it's an upward spiral, getting yes. better and better and better. If we can just, I suppose, become still mm-hmm. and know. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think become still and know, but I think it's also become present and aware and see. That's, the, that's the becoming still for me, becoming, yeah. becoming, becoming mindful. Becoming mindful, right? And, and, and it's not a withdrawal. I think Not sometimes people say, I, I'm going to become still and know, and that means they're going to close their eyes and sit on their cushion and become still, and it's all going to happen right here. Well, we have to do that. No question about it. You have to have a practice. There's, I mean, that, but you have to take that with you into the world. Absolutely. And then I think we see the glory. We see the beauty. We see the, I mean, the people, people have been so amazing. I've seen more care more yes. help more compassion yes yes and yeah. you know whatever the government it's in politics and you know people with a lot of money may or may not be doing ordinary people not are are stellar unbelievably absolutely stellar, absolutely right? heroes and yes in every possible way and and that's when we see that we see and we really look at that we see how much of that is that is actually happening and it reminds us that it is present it's present all the time yep and yep. when that stillness that you talk about john that stillness i think that becomes the eyes with which we see yes yes right? and then you can see that creation is always going on Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yes. as, as you say that, you know, Reverend John, um, this, this topic, the topic is ever ending a beginning. There's a point in every crisis situation where we stop or, or we come to the a realization that if I keep doing this, thinking this, behaving this way, it's going to continue exactly mm-hmm. as is. Yep. So, so once I think we come to that realization, there's an ending. And then what comes next? Hope, possibility, looking at, you know, there's potential. Yeah. That, exactly. So that is the beginning of maybe a shift in thinking, a shift in consciousness, and a shift into being that which attracts right. that, that, that new experience. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, but one has mm-hmm. to become so aware and so trusting that this truth, this thing we call truth and the principles, they work. And yeah. as somebody used to say, it works if you work it. Was that Edwin Gaines? Actually, that comes from the recovery program, AA. Ah, yes, it comes from AA. That's, the, 
that's the original that's where it originally comes from it works if you work it right and you can say that's exactly the same thing about uh, our teachings it works if you work it if you don't work it yeah, yeah. right yeah, it's up to you <laughs> uh, uh, well and you know it's so interesting too because we think of like the end of the year right at the end of the year and then you begin the new year and voila you're in the beginning right but the truth is really what happens after the ending for some period of time is not a whole lot mm. right it's called the transition zone it's called the neutral zone and we yep. do not like that right and what we often do is we race to a new beginning actually we see an ending coming and we start something ahead of the ending so that we don't have to experience the, the ending, ending. <laughs> and we don't have to experience right and we don't have to experience the unknown of not yet knowing what the new beginning is going to be i mean we feel like we've i'm we've certainly been in this with csl dallas for the last i don't know six eight nine ten months thinking at any moment things were going to shift and we were okay but how do we feed our online people and what does what does the center look like now and how are, are we going to keep doing these kinds of zoom things what is it right there's all this but but until something ends and the new beginning there's all this in between that, like the, the way it used to be has ended i think we're all clear about that <laughs> but whatever it's going to be on the other side we don't know and so here we are in this uncertainty this ambiguity this unknown space but yes. that's where the magic happens right because it's the fallow time i think of it as winter the winter time yes, dormant and, time yes dormant and what's happening in winter the roots are growing do you know that yes. the trees grow their roots in winter because yes. they're spending all of their time in the summer growing their leaves and photosynthesizing and doing all that work so they grow their roots in the winter when you can't see anything I know, I isn't that, that lovely, I right? Love that. And so in the times when we're not exactly sure when we're not, how and what, and what is it going to look like? And the new beginning hasn't yet fully emerged for us. I think that's when our trust is so profoundly important because we have to trust this open space into which new life is going to emerge. Ooh. And we're going to have- almost like a state of limbo between- Yes between yes. the two phases. That's exactly right, right? And and oh, then I we can that. we can see seeds that we've planted before or we can then see like there's an open space all of a sudden. Like now I can see maybe new, I can see a new idea or a new thought or a new way or right there's a because there's an open space. And then the new beginning, right? The new beginning isn't actually an avoidance of an ending. The new beginning is actually a real new beginning. Like it's really new. Like it's something new. Like it's meant to be. Say a little, yes. more. Say a little right? more about that. Well, think about how many. Well, okay. So ugh, I hate outing myself. Come on, you guys. <laughs> okay. So one of the things I realized many years ago is that 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 I was the world's worst at endings. So so when there was a party, like I would sneak out 30 minutes before I knew the party was over because I didn't want to say goodbye to anybody, right? Because it was, I didn't know how to do it and I didn't like it and I didn't, right? So, so I was terrible at ending relationships. So either I just sort of, you know, walked out and said, I never want to see you again. And that's that done. We're finished. Boom, bye, uh, mm, uh, right? And just, I was terrible at endings. And I would often, Joy, true confessions, I would often start the next relationships before I ended the, the one before because endings are so painful. And then what do you do in between? You're, you're, you're single. It's terrible. It's terrible. Terrible. Who will <laughs> love me? Who will love me? Who will want me? Who will want me? Ram, 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 right? And so, and we do this with jobs. We do it with relationships. We do it yep. with new ventures. We do it with all kinds of ways. We do it with churches. You know, we, 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 we love the science of man, but we have one foot in the Baptist church, just in case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I, I'm not pleased with something Reverend John said week before last. So, um, right. but, but instead of just saying it, you know, yes. I said yes. to one friend, if you love something, you don't walk away, you, you express, you can right. walk away. But you, you can, need, you but closure. which is a conscious ending. What you yes, just described a is ending. a conscious ending. So we yeah. consciously end yeah. things. 
right? Yeah. So that there's space into which the new can really emerge because otherwise the new is in reaction to you're the putting, thing it's you're ending. Putting new wine into old wine skins. Right, which we know doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And so this, this, this time of, I mean, we have to make friends with uncertainty and ambiguity and, and not knowing and not knowing what, how it's going to all unfold, but knowing, I loved what you said too, Sandy, that this is when we have our trust. We trust, absolutely trust that there is something happening and there's somebody, there's something there, there's something within us and there's something moving and, and then we're ready to direct. Oh, that, you know, right. Then, then we can direct a new beginning, but that be new beginning isn't in reaction to anything. That's mm -hmm. right. right? It's, it's, it's proactive. Um, yes. Yes. Um, let me just share some comments from the chat. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Just um, Steve saying a lot of hearts going off on Facebook with the previous statement, well, everything that you have said <laughs> is worthy of hearts. And particularly, and he quotes, it's going to be fine because I know where I stand. That, that's mm -hmm. true for that person. Um, yes. That was Carol, Carol Campbell practitioner. And she says, everything we need is simply awaiting our recognition to be yeah. released into our experience. Arlene Hilton says, I love that. Roots are growing in the winter unseen. Um, be still and know becomes be present and aware. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, um, our church is maybe like many other centers across the world. We, we've just completed our 2030 strategy. It, it has some very lofty, um, what is the word? Be, big, hairy, audacious goals. Oh. And, um, you know, we have been, you know, it's, it's humans that run centers for spiritual living. Right. And humans with socialization around money, around, you know, not, not enoughness. Mm -hmm. And of course, projects often are met with, where are we going to get the money? How are we going to afford this? But this new strategy will require it, it, there, there's going to have to be an ending of that thinking. Yes. And there's going to have to be a beginning of a new way of thinking. It's like new wineskins. Mm -hmm. How do we facilitate that transition as ministers, practitioners? How do we help? And of course, we need it too. Mm -hmm. you know? How do we do this for ourselves and for our community? Well, Cindy, I would say you said it very eloquently eloquently right i mean not, that's the work we have to end the yep. old idea and we have to replace it with an idea that's actually in alignment with what we say we believe and how funny it is that money is one of the places that we reserve and we say well yeah you know it doesn't really work there because yes. that money is because money is real you know how real money is right yes. I either have it or i don't it's real. Well, I don't know about you, but my experience is that money is all smoke and mirrors. I mean, I raised a child on a minister's salary and traveled all over the world. And, you know, I mean, I, I could go on and on and on and on and on because it's truly astonishing. I'm uh, and and so it, and it, it's it, we it, money is no different, is no more or less a mindset than anything else. Mm -hmm. And yep. if right, it's simply phenomena that we get to play with. And and it is, I love to do work with money. The reason I love to do work with money and I love to do work with abundance is because you can't fool yourself. You can fool yourself all you want and say, oh yeah, I'm more peaceful. You can fool yourself and say, oh, I'm more enlightened. I'm more spiritual. I'm, I'm always in the, it's all good stage, even though, you know, I'm complaining with my friend all the time and I'm rude on the highway and I all right. But I can, I can say that, but with money, you can't say it because you have to count it. And when, when, <laughs> yes. 
right? It's either there or it's not. And I'm either manifesting the, the abundance that I believe that I have and deserve and need for whatever projects are going on, or I'm not manifesting it. There's, there's no gray area. Mm -hmm. And so money is, is such an extraordinary opportunity for us to test our resolve. And, you know, I mean, it says in the Bible, Ernest Holmes says the same thing. Prove me now. These, these principles mean nothing if we're not proving them over and over and over again. And money is one of those places where you can prove it, not because it's all about acquiring and being wealthy and but because you cannot fool yourself. And we're either having a prosperous mindset or we're not. Now, this is now. Let me just also say that I think in in uh, metaphysical circles, in the science of mind, we have a tendency to talk about the abundant flow, how abundant the universe is, and we have a tendency to talk about how important the outflow is, the giving, tithing, the making sure that you're um, that you're also. Um, giving where you're spiritually fed so that you don't become a hoarder. And of course, not being able to give is a sign of lack. What we forget to talk about is this whole middle thing, this little pond that we begin to grow. That is, that is the good that we have when it's ours, when it's in our little pond. And we call that stewardship. And the stewardship over that, we don't talk about much because we don't like that part. Because we think of budgeting as limitation and we think of making plans as somehow not spiritual. And yet stewardship is nothing but choices. It's all it is. And fundamentally, our teachings is about choices. Yep. So, right. So my, I practice my abundant flow and then I get to make choices about what it's going to be for and how I'm going to use it and what I'm going to invest in, what I'm going to work with. And all of that is choices. So I can choose to fritter my one money away on a lot of little things, or I can choose to gather it all together and make a big project and say, I'm going to be a part of this big project. And I might decide that some of those little things that I like that are fun, I, I'm going to, I'm going to not do, or I, I have that opportunity, right? Because this middle part is choices. And then I do have to freely give because when I'm freely giving, I'm absolutely recognizing that all my needs are met and i'm yeah freely giving doesn't mean like i give on a i I give money i don't have i don't give on a credit card i don't buy stuff on a credit card if i can't afford to pay for it um but it's that freedom of set of gratitude when i when we when we tithe it's because we know that there is so much good in our lives that it's it has to be this is a this is an opportunity of gratitude and so yeah. these, right, these are the mind shifts. And I, I mean, I think that you already are talking about it. And that's the other thing is to keep talking about it. And I'll be afraid. Don't be afraid to talk about it. And, and you, and we, none of us can outgive God. So, you know, we put a stake in the ground for a big project and I just, I just demand the universe to supply, but I, I assume that we're all, we're, we're all part of the channels, but then there are also so many other channels. And that, that's where that abundance comes in, that there are so many channels and ways and unexpected places mm-hmm. that it come from, come from. And I will tell you, quite frankly, Sandy, as ministers and practitioners, the first place I have to do that work is within myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And the leadership of the community has to do that work. They have to do that within themselves. Then they can think about what they're going to do with the, com- with the community as a whole. Absolutely. Um, Right. And that's you not necessarily, um, you know, I don't, we don't always like to look in that mirror, <laughs> but you Wonderful. can't, but you can't say, well, I trust in spirit, you know, with my creativity and with how being my peace and my spiritual practice and all that, except, but I, but I got to bring my, I got to bring my corporate worldly w- wisdom or my business sense. So I got to bring that to the table when we're talking about money. Right. I mean, it's, we don't leave it at the door. Obviously we don't check our intelligence at the door, but, but that's not the spiritual truth. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Oh. And we get to practice it, right? Our, 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 I have always believed that spiritual community, living in spiritual community and building a spiritual community is in itself one of the best spiritual practices. Oh, lovely. 
Mm -hmm. Right, because it's in confronting these very this very question that you asked, Sandy. Sandy, it's in it's in confronting it, dealing with it, bringing our principles to bear on it. Right, that we are grown, our spirituality is grown, our and everything everything is grown from a spiritual point of view. So, so just even digging in and having the conversations and wrestling with it in our consciousness and having our leadership really wrestle with it. How do we practice principles that? that maybe feel like we're, I don't know, we're on shaky ground or we're not certain how it's going to work out. It's like, okay, but you do that in your life. In every other area of your life, why would this area be different? Exactly. Right. Uh, what role does visioning play, um, Dr. Petro, in terms of the practice of visioning, the spiritual practice of the visioning? The spiritual practice of visioning, um, I think of, well... I think of the spiritual practice of visioning as cultivating the field. Yes. I don't think its point is to come up with a strategic plan or to, it's not a directive practice, right? But no. there's something about cultivating the field. I mean, think about it. You're going to go plant a garden, whether it's flowers or organic vegetables or, you know, hay, whatever, whatever it is. What's the first thing you do? You cultivate the soil. Yep. And you till it and you turn it over and maybe you put in a cover crop and then you turn it over again or who knows, but you cultivate the soil. For Beautiful. me, visioning is cultivating the soil of consciousness of myself as an individual and of a group as and a group of people. Right. We're cultivating that field so that then when we go and we decide to do a strategic plan or we decide to make a decision about something or we decide to right, the field is fertile and things have already there's been some sense of movement and some sense of where things are coalescing around, even if it's as, as simple as a. Um, you know, people holding hands or, or a color green, or it doesn't have, right. But my experience is that the magic is that when that field has been cultivated through visioning and we start that more tangible process, all of a sudden things start to pop, you know, come to the surface and we think, yep. Oh my God, Oh my God. That's, that's like, we were vision that, you, and it like the connection is like amazing, but you're not yes. trying to make something green or you're not trying to figure out, well, how are we going to all hold hands? Right. That's not the point. It, because the field is now so fertile. Yes. Yep. So, yep. In, so in our community, we have a vision core that's visioning constantly for our community and for Wonderful. CSL Dallas. Right. Because Wonderful. it's cultivating that field. Do you do you uh, do you like that? Do what do you do with visioning, John? How does visioning work for you? Oh, wonderfully, wonderful. The, um, the ministers meet every Monday and we vision for every single project, whether yeah. it be our, our workshop at the end of the year, we vision for services. Uh, right. You know, if we have a Mother's Day service or, or, or whatever it is we're doing, we vision. And we vision for the strategic plan as I well and that. shared it with, the, with the, um, the people who were drafting it. Right. And it's yeah. rich and juicy, right? That's where Absolutely. the that's I where that's what you said. That it's, <laughs> it's cultivating the soil. It's it's preparing the soil. Uh -huh. you know, and when you do that, you, the crop must grow. Yes, that's exactly. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. It well, I was going to say it uh -huh. must grow, and it must, and it has richness to grow from, right? Absolutely. It doesn't feel quite so tactical and so, Absolutely. right? There's like it's vibrant and alive, and and something really magical happens. That that Absolutely. is certainly my experience. One, uh, yes, and the synchronicities have, are just amazing. Yes, right, right, right. <laughs> we have wow! The, the time is moving so fast. It's almost or or is almost up, and so I just want to ask those persons who, are, who have joined us on Facebook, um, what questions might you have for Dr. Petra? Just write them in the chat and we will direct them to her. And um, anybody else joining us who are, anyone else sitting on this call, please uh, do the same. We just have one, one comment from Pauline who says it works if you work it. She's just acknowledging yeah. that, that statement, yeah. okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah, if you're not willing to practice it, it's just it all, it's all just sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that I've, um, 
a friend gifted me um, some years ago with Joyous Living. Oh. And um, I found, I found the, the strategy that was used really helpful because it had the theory. There were some sometimes real life examples, but then it asks a question. And I, I really use it as a journal each morning to, to sit and think and contemplate. And then I got the abundance. And then I, this is the first one you did, right? Joyce, uh -huh, Joyce Freedom. Joyce Freedom. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, really? You know, it, it, oh. and so I eventually got a used copy from Amazon. But, oh, wow. you know, it's interesting. It has a, a, a signature in the front that says, Karen, many blessings from um, Petra. Oh, wow. I oh, love that. that's amazing. <laughs> so Talk about synchronicity. It could be your Karen. It could be another Karen. I but love that. That's awesome. There's nothing else. It's, it's totally new. Uh-huh. That's great. Well, and I think you can get them also through the CSL.org uh, um, shop, oh. right? So the three journals are available through the shop as well as on Amazon. Um, I didn't realize- Are you doing a new one for 2022? You, Have you, come out you know, we started working on them. We started working on one, but it got to, had to be put on hold because of the amount of childcare I was doing. And so we will pick it up again and it'll be the Joyous Love Journal. Wonderful, wonderful. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Yeah. Well, and yeah. we love for people to use it as a real journal, which is why we le left. We also left space for people to write in, write always with a provocative question to make you think about it. It's. I mean, I love the Ernest Holmes 365 and Richer Living, but it's easy to read it and go, oh, that's nice and put it down and put it away, right? But if you don't apply it to your life in the moment, like wh what does this mean to me today? What could I use it? How could I use it? What's going, you know, yeah. that's why those questions are so important. Because the theory without application is, yeah, it, it's only just oh, theory. Yeah. Just theory, that's right. You know, I, I, I'm I am really, really committed to putting the, the theory into practice and also in sharing with others that this is a practical tool and a school. Mm -hmm. And we we really can do a lot in our own lives if we apply what right. becomes a church on a Sunday morning. And, ah, Oh, that's right. wonderful. You know, what right. do we do with that sense of wonder? How do we use it and apply it in real life? Yep. Yeah. You know, yep. Uh, a comment Practical. here, let me just go to that. Um, Dr. Sonia says, visioning for our own lives, I have found for me is also a wonderful practice. Yes. As a, as a, I, I, on the personal level, yes. Yeah. Not just the organizational level. And it's fun to have friends who will sit and vision three or four times with you, for you. Right. Yes. You don't have to do visioning by yourself and people who love you enough to say, I'm going to set aside my agenda or what I think you should do, or, or even the fact that I just assume be visioning about myself. Right. And to really gift three or four visioning sessions to a friend um, is a powerful way to be in spiritual practice together as well. And, and, and what's good that. about it is um, it's useful in organizations too. I've, yeah. I've used it in organizations and it really sort of looks at, okay, what is spirit's highest idea? That, that, that's a lofty thought. But then it also looks at the end. What do we need to, to, to get rid of, to stop doing? And then what do we need to embrace to make the vision happen? Right. Yep. You know? Right. Yes, I think of it. I think of it as the first part spirit. What spirit's highest vision is my intuition speaking. <clears throat> that which I need to embrace or become is that which spiritual practice I need to do. The things I have to do practice around that which I need to release is usually the thing I should have taken into therapy. And if I haven't yet, I yeah. need to. I need to go take into therapy. Right. <laughs> Oh gosh! Um, and, a question from um, one of our um, one of those birds is Sheena. She says, "How does one deal with tithing in a virtual world where one doesn't feel connected to the ministry, no physical community, being online, no human connection, etc.? Help needed!" Exclamation sign. Yeah. Well, it's a great question. We are certainly confronting that ourselves. One is we don't believe that just because you're in the virtual world or that you're connecting on 
Zoom that you aren't having human connection because right now we're having human connection. I feel totally connected yes. to Sandy and John. I'm, I'd love I'm, to ask Sheena if she feels connected to us now. Yeah, right. That's a great question. Hopefully she'll answer. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, and so it's an intentionality um, of, of being connected, of, of, uh, of what do I want? Well, it's what we teach, right? If I feel connected, then others will feel connected. And we really create that space. Now, there's a lot of unknown in that. We do have some online folks who are generous givers. We have online folks that are tithers, um, but they're not at, there's, it's a much smaller percentage of our online people than in, in our local community, right? Our, our generous Absolutely. givers and tithers are a much larger percentage of the actual local community. And so that's something we're going to have to learn about. It's one of those places of the unknown. We're definitely in the winter of the unknown of that, the transition. Um, and we're putting down our roots. Yes, that's exactly right. Right. And we're learning everything we can about it. We're trying yep. things. We're practicing things and we're seeing what works and we're asking questions. Yes. yes. And we will come to the place where our online community will feel as a much a part of our community, although it may be very different. And mm -hmm. that's part of the newness. What if online community feels different than local community, but different is not bad? Exactly. What if different is just different? Yes, um, Sheena responded. She says, um, I do, and I think she responded to the, what you said. Yeah. But it's just a fatigue. Study online, work online, and then right. it's weekends. It's like, yes. oh, online again. Right. Yeah, I, I, I have a saying. I say I'm zoomed out. Right. And so let me just let me just ask you, is it okay for you to talk about how ill you feel all the time? Or is it okay for you to talk about how tired you feel all the time? Or do we not teach that it's also important to have a place where you can say how you're feeling, your human condition, and then speak spiritual truth? Right. For me, spiritual truth is it doesn't matter how many times I'm on Zoom in a particular day. Spirit knows how to do this. Spirit is not the enough energy to be on every Zoom call I need to be on or every Zoom call I want to be on. Now, I do know that actually being on Zoom, literally, I do not understand the physics of this. OK, but yes, you literally <laughs> have to drink more water when you're on Zoom. Yes. yes. Right. I don't know what I don't know what that is about. Zoom, reminder. Right. But you actually have to drink more water and you will feel physically less fatigued. <coughs> but there's also but there's also the intentionality. Right. And so and so what we have to discover. Is our subtle resistance. I'm zoomed out. I don't want to be on Zoom again. Yes. It's yes. also a subtle resistance. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> if we actually want to connect. Now, if we honestly don't want to connect, then just we can say, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be on yes. that Zoom call. Very right? useful. Very, right? very useful. So I work a lot. Oh, I have to, oh, I have to work so much on my resistance. <laughs> my resistance to all of the many things, including technology. <laughs> yes. But resisting it only makes it worse. Only you know, I love it, but I want somebody else to do it. You yes. Know? <laughs> I so give God, give God thanks for Vance yeah. and Steve, you know, because yes. then I don't have to think about it. You know? Right, but you still have to be on it. <laughs> you still have to be um, on it. Well, you know, we, we could do this for another hour, you know, easily. <laughs> that means that you have to come to Jamaica. And I, have, you have I would love to, family. absolutely. We'll um, come. You know, I mean. Oh, Peter, I had forgotten, you know, when I first met you, you told me about that. Um, experience at age 16, you know, and it, what a way time flies 20 years, eh? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, wonderful, you know, wonderful. We, are, we are at the, the, the top of the hour, yes. And, um, you know, as a parting is so sweet, so <laughs> you know, um, you know, but this ending is certainly a beginning of a, a wonderful new relationship, I know that for absolute sure. I love being with you guys. I oh, love it so man. much. It was so I, much I just, fun. I just think it is such an amazing piece of synchronicity that that um, Sandy's first book was has your signature in it. You know, and uh, uh, yeah, it's been you know. inscribed by you across the years. It's, it's the uh, last uh, one. I just got this. This is the first book, book 
but it's the last one in the series that I got. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I love so, that. Dr. Petra, just, you have just been, you have done it for me this evening. That, that mm -hmm. imagery of the winter and the, the, the trees Ooh. focusing on, on getting mm -hmm. those roots deeper so that they can withstand the next breeze yeah. blow, the next storm, you know, and, and be even more beautiful in the spring. It's just such a powerful image for me. I want to thank you so much. Uh -huh. And the affirmation that I'm fine because I know where I stand, you know. And uh, Dr. Sheila McKeithen from the um, UFBL, which is the president of UFBL, said, you know, how do you know? How do you know that you're on the right path? And I said, you know, because when it comes to the end and they say, I would have done it again. Yes. I'd do it all over again. Yes. Once I put my feet on this path known as the science mm -hmm. of mind and spirit, I knew mm -hmm. I was home. There are other mm -hmm. paths up the mountain and I mm -hmm. honor them, mm -hmm. but this is the one for me. Yes. It, it, it fits my personality, it fits, it fits my value system. Um, it, it just speaks to me. And yes. I'm hoping that all those who are online with us and those who will listen um, to the recording later, it will, it will just do that same for, thing for them, resonate with them and lift their consciousness up to the mm. very highest octave of love that is possible for human beings to feel and to express. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Peter, oh, for sharing. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Well, well, well don't, don't, don't quite run away yet. Um, if, before we ask you to do the closing um, treatment for us, just to, 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 to remind everyone that um, on the last when the last Thursday of January, we have as a, our special guest, Dr. Edward Villune mm -hmm. on our lifeline. Yes, there and you we go. We'll of course tell you a little bit more about that. And if we you send you the link. Yes, if you if you feel moved to support our ministry, please visit our donate page at donate dot temple of light csl dot org. I mean, virtual Sheena, but it it's the way of the world now. And there you'll find three ways to donate online in Jamaican or US dollars, as well as via bank transfer or deposit. And we really, really, you know, thank you so much for your generosity and for helping us at the Temple of Light be a beacon of light to the world. Wow, it's been, it's been an awesome evening and we're going Rich. to get started with God. And yeah. so, Dr. Petra, would you do us the honor? I sure will. Thank you so much. It's been just a joy and a pleasure. All right. So taking that moment to turn within. We do, in fact, turn within to that one infinite power and presence whose center is everywhere, but has no circumference, an infinite life, an infinite presence, right where I am, right where each and every one of us is. And so what I know for sure is that infinite life is pouring itself in through and as all of creation and each one of us. That each life is an expression of the one life, unique and precious and necessary for the unfolding and the emerging consciousness that is evolving into higher and higher and higher states and frequencies of love. I know that each mm. and every one of us is a part of that, that we are guided, guarded, and directed as we move into a greater understanding of who we are and the love that is moving as us into the world. I know that we are guided, guarded, and directed as we move into 2021, that our choices are inspired, 2022, <laughs> our choices are inspired, our footsteps are guided, and that all of it is impelled by the infinite presence of love that is the truth of our being. And as I know this is so, I know that the universe has our back in each and every one of us, and that there is a beautiful unfolding in 2022 of the new, of the creative, of the fulfilling, abundant life that each one of us so richly deserves. And so as I speak these words, I simply recognize that the law does nothing but say, yes, yes, this, this is the truth. And I accept this truth for myself and all of us here and all of us that who will ever hear the sound of this voice on this show, Lifeline. And so I call it good. I call it already good. complete. And so it is. 
And so it beautifully oh, it is. is. Wow. Ooh, oh, wow. I, I, I kind of had a little leak there, beloved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Friends, it was good to have had you join us. Yes. And we wish you every good thing for the new year that's about. Absolutely. Speak. Absolutely. Okay. Love Behold, I make all things new in 2022. 2022. 2022. And so it is. And so, so it, is. it is. Thanks. Thanks well, so much. Blessings. Thank you, Dr. Petra. Thank you. Okay.